almost done here, now out to the country to chart a winning route back. For Boris Johnson, a simple ambition, gain at least eight seats to secure a parliamentary majority, allowing him to deliver Brexit. His route there is less straightforward. The Tories need to hold on in areas where support has been looking shaky and then make major inroads in Labour leave seats in the Midlands, north of England and Wales. Spending and get Brexit done will be the Johnson watchwords. An almighty challenge for Jeremy Corbyn to win an overall majority. That would require more than 60 gains. Labour believes it can grow. It is targeting leave seats in the Midlands and remain seats in London, presenting the challenge of facing both ways on Brexit. Your choice on Brexit, with another referendum and a real end to austerity, will be the Corbyn watchwords. A long haul for Labour, so maybe help will be needed from the SNP and the Lib Dems, whose best hopes are to become kingmakers. The SNP aims to recover ground lost in 2017. The Lib Dems have high hopes in London and the southwest of England. This Thursday they aim to strengthen the hand of Remainers by agreeing a joint front with the Greens and Plaid Cymru in around 50 seats. A three-party Remain alliance is a step in the right direction for Remain-leaning parties but they need Labour to be on board as well. Splitting the Remain vote between Labour and all the other parties combined still splits the vote substantially. And so the question about how people will vote in individual constituencies, given that choice, could prove problematic for Labour, the Lib Dems, and could let the Conservatives in in certain circumstances. Across the water, there is deal-making too. To boost the Remain side, Sinn Féin and the SDLP will not contest three seats each. To maximise the Unionist vote, the Ulster Unionists will not be contesting North Belfast, while the Democratic Unionists will not stand in Fermanagh and South Tyrone. And a message for the whole UK, don't make any assumptions about this election. This one is extraordinarily hard to predict, even to say anything very sensible at this point. Partly, of course, we haven't seen the manifestos, and that does help to sharpen minds. But we've also got, you know, two um, or three parties with the Lib Dems, the Brexit Party, and the SNP, all ma making inroads into the two main parties. And so you've got much more of a contest. And in some of the marginal seats, this really could have quite an impact. And this is what is making it difficult for everyone not just the, uh, uh, the people who spend their, the whole of their working days doing this, to predict. Off to the races. In just over five weeks, we will see continuity, change or uncertainty over the occupant of number 10.